I'm Niall. I'm Liam. I'm Harry. I think if you open up to someone, oh, yeah, it's yeah, a lot easier for you to, for you to open up back. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, Niall gets a little Yeah, I, I'm actually quite claustrophobic. I don't really like tight spaces, so. It's it doesn't well. help in the job. <laughs> You have me to thank. Yeah. You're welcome, One Direction and Simon Cow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been great fun. Those lads are quite similar to us, so it's been nice to have uh, you know four other lads about to talk. Yeah, it's, it's, like Louis said, it's been really cool. We get on really well with the guys, so yeah, it's been cool. British group One Direction has brought the boy band concept back to center stage in America and across the world. Just like their predecessors of decades past, like New Kids on the Block, Sync, and the Backstreet Boys. One Direction possesses the same formula that made successful teen bands popular with young female fans. They're cute, charming, and individually talented. In comparison to the bubblegum boy bands from the 80s, One Direction's actually sort of in that same vein. Uh, there was New Kids on the Block, uh, Backstreet Boys, In Sync, even New Edition. Uh, and then it was a lag in that whole market, but now One Direction has brought it back. Although by comparison, most British bands don't rely on synchronized dance moves like their American counterparts, just good old-fashioned musical chops at their disposal. Well, they're definitely comparable to the, uh, to the Spice Girls. You know, um, they're one of the few UK groups that's really had a lot of success in, in the U.S. In, in recent years, you know, as far as pop music goes. I would have to say if you compared One Direction to anyone, maybe uh, Backstreet Boys or New Kids on the Block. But again, you're looking at the different genres and different times. So you can't compare them side by side. You can compare them in retrospect. Since 2010, the five-member group have been living out their musical dreams in front of the entire world, ever since being discovered on the U.K. hit show X Factor. Each member were solo contestants until judge and former Pussycat leader Nicole Scherzinger suggested that the talented boys would work better together than apart. And boy, was she right. She also felt that neither would make it through the X Factor competition as solo artists. In a recent interview, Nicole said she practically put together the group with her hands tied behind her back. Brad Blanks here at the MIB3 Black Carpet premiere in New York City. History was created tonight. First there were the Beatles, then the Rolling Stones, and tonight, One Direction made their debut on a New York City movie premiere. Check out the boys, and also that chick, Nicole Schwerzinger. She's the one that founded them as a judge on X Factor in Britain. She's got really big hair tonight. Nicole, could I ask you a quick One Direction question? One Direction? I just saw them. I said, I'm so proud of you guys. I can't believe it. But, you know, when you have a mind like mine and you knew that it would work and you put them all together. Yeah, you're a musical genius. I'm not, not going to take credit, but I'm going to take credit. Pussycat Dolls lead singer Nicole Scherzinger thought it was a good idea to bring these five young, good-looking guys together and make a boy band. They were great individual talents, and she thought, if we bring them together, here comes another supergroup boy band. I know it's got to be tough for Nicole Scherzinger. She was right there on X Factor. I believe it was even her suggestion that they come together as a group. And for the most part, when you hear about One Direction and there's some reference to how they came together as a group or the executives involved, all that credit generally goes to Simon Cowell. We never hear Nicole's name come up. Um, and that's I think that's unfortunate. But I, I think, too, like that's kind of kind of how the business goes, you know? During the boot camp stage of the competition, the boys qualified for the group's category on the show. They only had two weeks to prepare and get to know one another. Harry Styles, in that span, came up with the name One Direction for the fledgling band. In the UK, the group became appointment viewing on TV. One Direction finished third in the competition, but their song Forever Young would have been released had they won on the show. Instead, it was leaked on the internet. One Direction actually didn't come together as a band. They were individual contestants on X Factor, and Simon Cowell, who the guys call Uncle Cy, 
He uh, put them together, made them a group, and this group actually swept UK first. And from there, they have uh, pretty much captured the nation. And what's interesting about this band is when they came together, not one of the guys knew each other. They all were just individual singers who wanted to win a reality show competition. They learned who each other was, and at that point, uh, they became a band. And then they went on and they won. Uh, they didn't win the top prize, but they were a runner-up, a third runner-up. And that is how they actually sped into stardom. Despite Nicole's chance for credit in One Direction's creation, it's Simon Cowell who ultimately signed the group to a recording contract worth more than $2 million U.S. Simon Cowell is technically credited for the formation of One Direction because he's the mastermind behind The X Factor, which is where uh, One Direction was formed. Um, the thing about Simon Cowell is, I mean, he really became sort of this household name because of um, his role as a judge on American Idol. Now, prior to that, he was a judge on Pop Idol, which was in the UK, so Simon Cowell was already known in the UK, but it wasn't, he didn't really take over as a sort of worldwide, I don't wanna say icon, but personality, until American Idol happened in 2002, and that show just blew up. I mean, everyone saw that. It launched the careers of so many artists. The success of One Direction goes to show that Simon Cowell either has a nose for talent or he knows how to masterfully market pop superstars. Simon Cowell has been a huge influence on the music business over the last 10 years. In the U.S., we were introduced to him through American Idol. And even if we weren't aware of his credits, what we were aware of immediately was his taste in music. And people criticized him for being really hard and tough on the contestants, but everyone always agreed with what he said. So he gave just some of the best advice. And again, without people in the U.S. being familiar with his catalog per se, just immediately had a lot of respect for um, the advice he was able to give artists and really help these contestants move along um, in American Idol. And through that, we've seen some of the biggest artists in pop music of the last 10 years come from that show. One Direction's music is poppy and it's catchy and it's upbeat. Vocally, they're not the greatest of the boy bands. I would, you know, it's it's fun. They're more like talk singing versus actually like boys to menning it. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I'm not hearing them bust out with the ballads like, you know, Instinctive, for example. But their music is fun enough and catchy enough and they have an audience for it. The girls will like it. It's bouncy, it's fun. I love all of them. I love all of them. So much. They're all sweet. If you could date one, though, who'd it be? I would. Uh, 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 well. Well. The thing is, <laughs> the thing is, Donna, take the question. <laughs> the thing is, Girl. here's the answer. Girl. We love all of them. Help you. The thing is, like, I feel like they'd be such good friends. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I don't know. I think they, they're, they're fun. Like, yeah. we'd be yeah. best friends. Like, just. Yeah, we'd be. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, yeah. Love, I love their the vibe that it gives them. Yeah, they're really cool. Also, they're really fun to look at, so, yeah. One Direction fans shot through the roof. Unlike bands before them, where radio, TV, and magazines fueled their ascension, it was the internet pushing the group to great heights. Following Justin Bieber's blueprint, who used social media to get ahead of steam, One Direction took it one step further. In the United States, the group was a mystery to anyone over the age of 26. Yet their popularity among the very young and tech-savvy crowd was unprecedented. One Direction success is bubbling beneath the surface. Uh, they're really it started a grassroots following online. They're not plastered all over billboards. They're not on TV all over the place. But they will be soon. <laughs> they're getting bigger and bigger. Uh, and they have a huge following. Uh, they have a sex appeal with a young audience. And they actually uh, are, are pretty loose. They're not really highly packaged. What amazes me about One Direction's influence is again their social media presence beyond just you know trending on twitter here and there they have consistently i don't even know for how many months maybe at least a year been in the top 100 hashtags on instagram it's one of those things where it's like you can search the one direction hashtag hashtag one direction on instagram and literally all those these photos will pop up and they're not even of One Direction. They're like of shoes and food. People just hashtag One Direction nonstop because they know that's what people are searching for. I've seen Instagram accounts 
and Twitter accounts just blow up by fans because all they do is post either One Direction photos or One Direction news. So these girls that are running these little fan accounts have 20, 30, 50,000 followers, and they have nothing to even do with One Direction themselves. Um, the one thing that One Direction does on social media that other artists don't do is that they actually use social media personally. A lot of artists right now have a platform where their name is blah, 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 and they tweet out, but it's not them tweeting. Everyone knows that One Direction is tweeting themselves. And I think that's a really big issue right now. You could be one of the biggest superstars, but if you aren't tweeting yourself, no one's gonna really care. It's just a generic sales pitch. I think social media was a big part of launching the careers for One Direction, the same, that, same way it's been for Justin Bieber and Lady Gaga and all these other pop stars because so you take One Direction and you have them on this TV show, The X Factor, and people get to watch them from inception. And there's immediately an opportunity for the fans to go online to start talking about the artist, to find other fans and to, you know, form, you know, fan groups. And then the artists also have a platform to share information about about themselves, not just music, not just information about their music, but their personal lives and their daily habits. And and those are things that people just just love. And it just makes people gravitate to them even more. One Direction has a huge fan base and they're all online. The guys in the band are online. So there is a connection that they have with their fans that other recording artists in history have not had. They actually get to know these guys on a personal basis because of this social media connection. Um, can I lick your face? Yeah. You've, been, you've been sent a I got sent, I got sent a Borat Mankini once. That's yeah. pretty weird. I wore it. Yeah, I did wear it. Uh, I wore it around my house while I was doing some spot of cleaning. While well, the cleaning was there? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Comfortable? Yeah, very comfortable. Very, very, I got a nice, yeah. nice breeze. Yeah. Yeah. Very free. Niall was sent a little lamp. A real one? A by real by lamp. some little woman little called lamp. Mary. What are you doing it? You lost it. He's got it in his back garden. It's in my back garden, yeah. <laughs> He's chained it up for the Olympics. <laughs> when it comes to the fame on One Direction, it's interesting. When it comes to fame on Twitter, the most famous One Direction man is Niall Oren. Second is uh, Harry Styles. Those are the two big top. When it comes to personality and people, in, and when you see them on the red carpet, it's def definitely Zayn Malik. He gets more screams than I've ever heard. It's so amazing how he really gets the fans excited. But it's a different medium than the Twitter universe. The Twitter universe is more about Niall or Harry. And I think it's partially because they tweet more than Zayn does. And so the fans respond more. And when I say popularity, we're talking about seven, eight million people each. It doesn't include what's on the main site for One Direction, the band. While still mostly popular in the UK in early 2011, the group began to work on their debut album, Up All Night, in London and the US later that same year. The group's first single, What Makes You Beautiful, debuted at number one on the UK singles chart. Two other songs, Gotta Be You and One Thing, also hit the top 10 on February 2nd, 2011. Harper Collins released the book One Direction, Forever Young, a bio and a picture book about the group that sold hundreds of thousands of copies. When they came out with the song, What Makes You Beautiful, like that song, it was just so huge. It was undeniable. And, and to be honest, for me, it was a little later that I found out that, no, these are the guys that are on that show, The X Factor, UK. And so I was pretty impressed because very, infectious, big song, like something you could see um, used for television commercial advertisements, you know, very fun. Um, I thought it was great. It sold well, you know, in 2012, just in the US alone, um, the two of the, like, Run Direction's two albums topped the top five, you know, albums of 2012 in the US. So that has to say something. There's an audience for it. If anybody goes to see a One Direction concert, you'll leave with pierced eardrums because the screeches from their female, from the band's female fans is reminiscent of Beatlemania. Yeah, What Makes You Beautiful is a really great song. That's probably my favorite or, or second favorite of, of their hits so far. It's just really 
again, it's a heartwarming song. It, it just really makes you, um, makes you feel good. It's one of those feel good songs. And it's, it's really nice and that none of the members of the group overshadows the others. Uh, going home, chilling with, oh, I think all of us are doing the same, family. chilling with our family, eating, drinking, sleeping, chilling. <laughs> with success across the Atlantic on the horizon, American music executives took notice and Columbia Records signed the group, filling a void in the music scene, since other American boy bands of that fabric had grown a little too old for young girls. Do you find a middle ground? What's middle between? I think UK I think you wait for it. See a boat, it yeah, a boat, and then go on the boat. <laughs> a boat party. You're listening. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Oh. I've been excited about it. So. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely think that One Direction is has a lot of elements from a lot of different boy bands over the years. There's one particular song they have. It's literally like dead on the Backstreet Boys. Um, I want it that way. The melody is pretty much exactly the same. I think in terms of the kind of choruses that they have and how much energy they have in the choruses and how lively they are. I think that even reminds me of groups like um, the Monkees. You know, if you, you know, you listen back to some of their old music and you can kind of find that uh, similarity as well. To build a fan base, the marketing executives at Columbia began a social media campaign asking fans to sign a petition and to enter video competitions to win a concert in their hometown. The strategy worked. The band's Facebook followers rose from 40,000 to a whopping 400,000 fans. One Direction's debut single, What Makes You Beautiful, was the most pre-sold song in Sony music history. Uh, it was bubblegum music, but it was a huge hit. What Makes You Beautiful sold more than 131,000 copies in its first week even though it hadn't been played on American radio. The biggest song for One Direction would be What Makes You Beautiful. You hear it everywhere. It's not just on the radio. You hear it in arenas when you go to sporting events. You hear it on videos. You hear it in commercials. It just really resonates with you that lyrically, that you're important. By the beginning of 2012, One Direction had found themselves constantly on the road. Every part of the world they ventured to, France, Australia, and the United States, screaming young girls met them. It made life very difficult for journalists looking to grab sound bites. One Direction, I think the reason the fans like them the most is that they are who they are, and they don't change for anyone. They're the same on Twitter as they are in person. Upon arrival to the United States, One Direction went on a radio promotion tour that placed them as an opening act to the Nickelodeon band Big Time Rush, where they eventually upstaged their U.S. counterparts. I like I like I like John Lennon. I think he was sick. Yeah, he was cool. I I think he was cool. Yeah, I think he was quirky little guy. Yeah, he was he was quirky. We'll, we'll go with John Lennon. Even though they didn't know each other before, they um uh, they were on uh, X Factor. They grew together quickly as as a group, and they had a, a lot of chemistry together on the show. And Simon knew after watching them perform together that they had a lot of potential as a group. So it was pretty much a no-brainer for him to go ahead and, and sign them to a contract. The male quintet admits to being a little homesick when they're away from the UK. One of their hit songs, Take Me Home, has fans busy rocking to the beat, but has a double meaning for the group. Take Me Home came out uh, in late uh, 2012. And when it came out, they had these countdowns. And I don't, I'm so impressed with the countdowns because when the Take Me Home countdown started, they would send out via Twitter little pieces of the cover and little snippets of the songs. This excited the fans, not just in the United Kingdom, but around the world. And everyone was just clinging to what was the next little snippet coming out. So when the first song came out, everyone loved it. Second song came out, everyone loved it. And then the album came out and people went crazy. The fans were ecstatic. And you can take it two ways, really, like, because obviously we're out on the road a lot, and when we're out on the road, it gets to a certain point where you, you, you kind of just, you need to go home for a little bit and just, you know, you miss your home. So Take Me Home is kind of like where our heads are at a little bit when we're on tour sometimes. And then the other Take Me Home is, you know, take our album home. And then the other Take Me Home is Take, take Me Home. home so. after a night out. Which one was it going to? After a kebab. Sorry, after a kebab. <laughs> a kebab. Take Me Home not only soothed the pain of not sleeping in their own beds, the album itself, was highly successful, selling more than 540,000 units in its first week in the United States. Their debut LP, Up All Night, and their sophomore effort, Take Me Home, were third and fifth best-selling CDs of 2012. 
with combined cells of more than 10 million units. So now wherever we go, we get given these things that we never asked for. And it's always like a plate of cheese. Yeah, yeah. it's a smelly, horrible it smells. Weird cheese. Yeah, like by the time you get nice in the room, sweets. room smells of cheese. Oh, yeah, we got a few stories. Now the Take Me Home tour is coming up, and this is the first time that One Direction is going around the world in arenas, which to hit that capacity is amazing. And it all started because the Madison Square Garden sold out so quickly to their show there that they decided to, to push it on and do a, a massive tour. And all through 2013, they will be out on the Take Me Home tour. And uh, there's a 95% sold out on this tour. I would describe One Direction's music as a boy band as very, really fun, upbeat, lively, energetic. One of their most popular tracks off the Take Me Home album is Live While We're Young, a catchy sing-song tune that's helped the group maintain their dominance over the airwaves and downloads. The song celebrates youth and living life to the fullest. I play the guitar. Loving it. I play guitar on the song as well, actually. No, I'll never stop. Yeah, to be fair, we need to push that more. Yeah. Because you haven't even mentioned it. I keep forgetting. I play guitar on most of the I have five or six songs in the album. Yeah, guitar, actually, which I think is wicked. Which is pretty cool. I'm very happy with it. So I play on Live All Around. No, he doesn't stop playing guitar ever. No. He's still playing well, guitar. Well, he's just a regular busker now. Yeah, he is. Yeah. No, that's what he, does. he does his own gigs. Yeah. And when... One Direction song, Live While We're Young, is actually a pretty catchy tune. It's, it's got that bouncy, bubblegum pop feel that bands like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC have done years ago, and that music is still relevant today. I really like One Direction song, Live While You're Young, because, and I think this is the epitome of why they're so popular. You know, like they get it. And so they're taking advantage of their youth and their disposition and everything. And with the song about um, this lifestyle, it really comes across in this song. We've just kind of, we've started having a, a couple of meetings about kind of how we, what, what everything that we want to do with the tour. Yeah. Um, and I think that the last, you know, last year's tour, we didn't really expect to be doing it for that long. So we kind of had to adapt the show to, to be able to do it in more places. And mm -hmm. I think this time it's going to be nice aiming for obviously for like bigger venues and being able to just kind of shove more in, but yeah. not too much. When I've gone to different One Direction concerts as well as One Direction events, I've never seen nicer fans. These fans show up. They're really polite. They're really nice. I've been to other places and, and the fans aren't very nice or they're in a hurry to get to the front, which to me is impressive that the people who like One Direction are respectful enough to appreciate One Direction to be cool. Another really cool thing about One Direction that a lot of people don't know is when you go to their concert, they have a special section of time when they communicate with their fans. Now, you have full sold out concerts. It sounds impossible to communicate with fans. What they do is they spe have a special hash mark and this uh, I'm sorry what they do is they have a special hashtag on Twitter and those people at the concert tweet their questions with the hashtag and then for 15 to 20 minutes they answer these questions live in front of the audience who just asked the questions this is remarkable it's one of those things where you don't see a lot of personal interaction by performers who just show up and perform so I think that that connection is awesome anyone who's smart would strategically create any sort of business around One Direction because the fans are there, they're tweeting about One Direction, they're Instagramming about One Direction, like that's sort of it. Honestly, people like to compare One Direction and The Wanted. I don't even really think there's a big comparison because The Wanted is nowhere near talked about the way One Direction is. One Direction also performed in the closing ceremony of the London Olympics in the summer of 2012. With their brilliant performance in front of the entire world, their British invasion onto the world music scene had officially begun. So One Direction is a new version of the British invasion. I mean, the Beatles rocked, uh, uh, rocked the United States back in the 60s. Uh, uh, in the 80s, the Culture Club was big, but there hasn't been really that many big English acts that have broken through in the United States. One Direction topped the charts, the Billboard charts, here in the US as well as the UK. Um, I'm a fan of Paul. Yeah, me think, too. Yeah. Paul. It's all Paul's about Paul's cool. Yep. All right. The boy next door. The guy who you see across the street that throws the paper your direction. The, the boy you want to meet. Really soft spoken, very kind. Um, and that cute British accent. Oh my God. Yes. And you forget that when you're on the red carpet because One Direction shows up, you're like, wow, 
it's the guys from One Direction. And then you have them speak to you and you're like, oh goodness, they have the cute accent. <laughs> well, they're, they're squeaky clean, they're nice. I mean, every member of the group has this, um, this attribute that's uh, that's given to them. Like one is the, the mysterious one, one is the, um, the, the leader, one is the talker, one is, you know, wh whatever. But as a whole, as, as a group, they really are seen as a, a very fun, upbeat, you know, happy-go-lucky pop group. They're sort of like the, the monkeys, except they are actually talented, you know? The monkeys had this TV show back in the 60s. Well, I won't sing, but uh, they were seen as this really happy-go-lucky, you know, kind of sort of zany, friendly bunch of guys, and, and um, the the members of, of uh, One Direction are, are sort of similar. In terms of like the boy band factor, One Direction wins hands down. The guys are more attractive in like that like teenage sense. They have great hair. I mean, <laughs> they bring it when it comes to their appearance and their style or swag and they're they're they've done a really really good job of keeping themselves in the media whether it's harry styles dating taylor swift or you know any sort of thing like they have just a really huge dedicated fan base and they've used social media there to their advantage they tweet enough they they interact with their fans and they've done a very good job of like you know perfecting the whole boy band package yeah that's what that's the plan to get the, get the guitar out and tour Get a few electric guitars and uh, play them as well. So is it you playing the? Da -da 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 -da. I play, there's two parts in the. Da -da -da, if you can hear it, it's oh, like is it? dubbed. So oh. the he card played the. Da -da 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 -da, and I played. Da -da 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 -da. Oh right, it's a different Sick. thing. Guitar. There you go. From place to place to place, One Direction is so busy. I'm not sure how they breathe. In particular, One Direction. Not only are they doing arena tours and they're doing a concert series, but they also at every stop they do meet and greets. They do promotional materials. They're uh, all sorts of uh, radio and television. So they don't just show up and they perform. They have to show up. They, they're also required to rehearse. It's, it seems to be, you know, there seems to be like a it's wave nice of British acts going over there. So, you know, Ed Sheeran, Adele, everyone, like. Jesse J. Yeah, Jesse J. Lots of British people. Mm. And Irish people. He's that British attack. The One Direction pop store is a really a fascinating phenomenon. The reason it's fascinating is it's there for six weeks, and then it's gone. It's, it sells exclusive One Direction items, and then it's gone. And while it sounds crazy, everything from the toothbrushes to the onesies, they have individual One Direction onesies, are all plastered with the faces of the five guys. One Direction's performances are not like other boy bands of days past, which relies on dancing and sequence. Their energy is electric, and according to the band members, they want to give their fans the best possible show every night. But don't look for them to invite fans on stage anytime soon. Yeah, the, it, I don't know, I just think it's not. It's just one of them. We just don't see it as that fair, because like, obviously it's all of all of our fans are so dedicated, and you know, they all queue up for hours and they have to wait, you know, for their tickets. And then like one one fan gets picked out to come on stage, and it's just not really fair. And all yeah. It's a shame that we can't bring them all up. Yeah. There's just yeah. not enough space. If you would compare them to any of the boy bands of the past, vocally at least, I would compare them to New Kids on the Block. Because when you listen to songs back in the day, like Hanging Tough or anything like that, it's more like they were singing, but they were more like talk singing. And it was like, it just had a very similar feel. Like I wouldn't liken it to NSYNC or the Backstreet Boys at all. For One Direction, the only incident that I do know of is when they were in New York City, um, in, for the Madison Square Garden concerts. They had an issue with uh, the fans outside of the hotel. They camped out overnight and it was less than, uh, was below zero. So they camped out overnight. Finally, they got the fans to come home, go home. The fans came back the next day. Um, Niall Horn came down with his family to go sightseeing and they got into a taxi and they took off because you know that's what you do in New York City. And apparently some of the fans followed them by foot on blocks in the middle of the traffic and there was a big concern about safety there. You know, the main thing we, we do every day is just enjoy ourselves, have fun. You know, they'll have the same like inside jokes and stuff and just keep those rolling. Keep doing what they're doing. While the entire world was enthralled in one direction hysteria, the group's popularity wasn't all that big in the United States until they appeared on the Today Show on NBC. And like magic, 
they sold out Madison Square Garden. By the end of 2012, they had their own Pepsi commercial. So here's this band, One Direction. People had heard of them. Uh, they may have heard of a song. They may have heard the name. They weren't really sure of who they were, but they were kind of crossing over into the United States. And then the next thing you know, in a Super Bowl commercial for Pepsi, the band is alongside football star Drew Brees in this very big ad. And now the masses get to link the guy's faces with a song on the biggest media platform there is. They started with uh, being on X Factor, and then they ended up finding their way very quickly by using television. Television is a wonderful medium to push artists out there, and they really used that every week. They performed and did well. One Direction is basically five Justin Biebers, all, all in one. So they're going after the same demographic, so you can't help but to have a little friendly rivalry going on there with the, the young girl just going crazy over all of them. And I think with One Direction, in one sense, they have a bit of a, an advantage because there's five different guys. You know, you take a room full of young teen girls and ask them who's their favorite, and, you know, they, all, they have five different choices to choose from. At the One Direction concert, I actually tweeted, and, and you know, they... They were answering different questions. It was something that was inter it was personable. It was real. And one, I remember the one, the one time that I went, it was actually the second concert I went to, they were asking about socks. It's such a strange thing to be asking about socks. But I remember the fan wanted to know about the socks. And you could tell that it was a moment in time that they were actually talking to the fans and not just some random question because they were like, where did you get the socks? They said where they got the socks. So that's a really cool thing. And I think that that personable reality is what people want to hear. They don't want a canned, hey, I got a, I've got a concert coming up. They want to know what you're eating for dinner. And celebrities are really needing to cater to that. I think Justin Bieber had to happen in America for America to accept One Direction. Because all One Direction really was was five Justin Biebers put in a group and given to them, you know? Even though the group has blazed a trail all over the music industry, they've decided to jump into the movie game like other pop stars Katy Perry, Mindless Behavior, Snoop Dogg, and Justin Bieber. The amazing thing about One Direction compared to any other star that I have ever interviewed or talked to or anything is that you can barely hear them. And that sounds sort of strange. Why can you barely hear them? But the thing is, is that the crowds are so loud. You can't hear them and they're right in front of your face. The group is releasing a 3D documentary directed by award-winning filmmaker Morgan Spurlock, whose past work include the popular and scathing film, Super Size Me. American music audiences left a gap in the boy band marketplace. And Justin Bieber filled that. And now One Direction has sort of taken the mantle that Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and New Edition and a number of other bands had done years ago, and they've brought it back up again. And, and if they continue to keep on pumping out music, they can still be relevant a long time from now. One Direction wasn't the first band put together by a hit TV show. More than 40 years ago, a group of goofy strangers were cast as the fictional group The Monkees. The idea was the brainchild of the show's producers, and eventually, the show scored in TV ratings and on the music charts in the mid-60s. I think if you look at uh, some of the biggest boy bands of all time, whether it's the Backstreet Boys or NSYNC or 98 Degrees, I think you find a little bit of all those groups in One Direction, and I feel like it's intentional. I think they, they studied um, the guys who came before them and made sure to incorporate just, you know, a lot of those elements to make sure that people would uh, receive them as well. Although the group's members weren't friends until they were competitors on The X Factor, they all seemed to gel cohesively as a band born to play as one unit. One Direction's debut album, Up All Night, was the first album by a UK artist to debut on the US Billboard charts at number one. They managed to do something that the Beatles couldn't do. They, uh, their first album, their debut album, debuted at number one 
on the Billboard Albums chart. That's something that, that no other act ever did, not even the Beatles. They're in the Guinness Book of World Records for that. And that's that right there says a lot about their talent and a lot about their uh, fan friendliness. One of the big differences between One Direction and their rivals, The Wanted, is that The Wanted, even though they're very popular as well, they seem a bit more pretentious. You know, when you see them in their videos, you know, they, they seem to like, you know, have this uh, this kind of air about them, like, yeah, you know, we're the hot boy band. We know the girls love, you know, and they, they kind of have that bit of a disposition where the guys in One Direction, you know, they seem more youthful, like they're just fun, out having fun and having a good time. And to me, I feel like that's a major distinction between the two. One Direction mania and Justin Bieber mania is two things. One Direction is far more global and uh, they cover so many different languages and they're a tighter group. The group's brand of bubblegum pop has invaded girls' iPods all over the world with millions of records sold in various countries. Even though the guys stay busy on tour, they still find time to play. Niall, how are you, mate? How you doing? What's going on, mate? Not too much, buddy. Just got in to watch this movie. Can't wait. How you doing, champ? All right, how are you? How are the, how, how are the American women? Amazing. They're very polite. Yeah. All right. Well, we learn a lot from One Direction then. The American women are very polite. They tweet from their own accounts, and they provide that connection to their fans. And I think that's so important. I think that fuels like the obsession that these girls have. It's like, you know, if if Zayn Malik's gonna send a sweet dreams or a good night XOXO tweet, how many of those girls are thinking that XO and XO is targeted directly at them? They can reply right away, they can talk to their favorite like celebrities and bands. Do you know what I was saying the other day, it'd be good to spend a day in bed. Like just to spend the whole day in bed, but when you're on your day off, I no, when you're on your day off, you just think if you've got one Cheers day off, Kyle. you think you've got too many things yeah. to do. Do you know what I mean? You've got loads of things to sort out. Yeah, but that's what if you've got. A, I think when you've got a stretch of time off, you know, when you've got like oh, yeah, yeah. days, and you just like need one day where you just sit, one watch Jerry nice Kyle, things. cup of tea, yeah. you're laughing. You should have a bit of Jesus. Uh -huh. Right, I watched it this morning. And Isn't you really good? only get up and shower and get dressed for dinner. Potentially, you don't even get up and shower. It's one of those where you stay in bed all day. Wow. Occasionally, that is a good. Today, I don't feel like doing anything. Yeah. That's why I live, Imagine that now, today, we were just in bed all day. That would be literally the perfect thing right now. Harry Styles, one of the most popular members, spends a lot of his spare time hanging with the ladies. From models to singers, Harry has dated the cream of the crop, his most popular romantic acquaintance being singer Taylor Swift. One Direction band member Harry Styles dated one of the biggest pop superstars in the world, Taylor Swift. They were a high profile couple, very much in the public light, and ultimately, like, many of Taylor Swift's other pop sensation boyfriends soon became an ex-boyfriend. Harry Styles and Taylor Swift have done the on again, off again thing. Taylor Swift is like, you know, four or five years older than uh, Harry Styles, but I don't know, maybe it was something about the hair, or maybe she's a fan of boy bands too, but she kept going back. I mean, Harry Styles has this very nonchalant thing about him. He has this kind of swagger, I don't care attitude. And as a girl, I mean, a lot of times you're drawn to that. You're like, wow, like, He's not bending over backwards. What the heck? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to change him. And I think that was the case with Taylor Swift. I mean, she sees this guy. She sees the allure, the hair, all of that stuff. She wants him. But at the end of the day, she knew he was trouble. <laughs> the famous girlfriend of One Direction that we all know about is Harry Styles and Taylor Swift. Um, where this started, we're not sure. How it ended, we all know that they're no longer together. Um, but the interesting thing about Harry Styles is every time he has a girlfriend, he loves to put it out there. He loves to show it. And this last one with Taylor Swift was a real turnoff for One Direction fans. He was able to date Taylor Swift, who was a couple years older than him, like three years older than him. And I think people were really surprised by that. But I guess it just shows <laughs> what kind of pill he has with the ladies, even those who are older. I think video games. let them be themselves. Yes. Like, you know, don't try and mold well, them into good. the guy that you want. Excited. Like, yes. No? Yeah. You should like them for what they are. And if you let them be themselves, then yeah, they should. I'm an emotional guy, so I don't have to worry about it. Harry was also rumored to be dating Harry Potter star Emma Watson. But the dashing bachelor broke a golden rule while attending the premiere of her movie, Perks of Being a Wallflower. Film audiences have seen a proliferation of documentaries and films 
on these artists, their backstage exploits, concert films. Katy Perry did one, Justin Bieber did one. One Direction also has their film coming out. What was the film like? Do you know what, it's I'd good. Like it. Apparently the second half is really dark, but there's great songs in it. Really good soundtrack. <laughs> And I love the film. Well, I'm sure I've heard the second half is very good, and I will be going to watch it again. So watch it now, and do it. So I'm just watching the second half of the movie. Oh, but it's not out yet, so I can't watch it right now. Sorry. Did you go with Grammy? I heard him talking about yeah. it. It's not ready. Yeah. The rest of the guys aren't far behind in the dating department, with Liam being the exception. Liam first met his current girlfriend, Danielle Pizer, when he was performing in The X Factor in 2010. She was a dancer for the show and danced behind the group One Direction on many occasions. They literally have taken over. They're just, I mean, but at the same at the same token, they're just like the boy bands of yesteryear where like people would line up two, three days in advance in Times Square just to stand outside of the TRL building to hold up a sign to say, I love you, Justin. I'm like, sorry, Justin, but I don't love you that much to stand in 30 degree weather. That's a, that's a commitment. One Direction is genuinely happy. They love to prank each other. They care about their fans. And then on two different occasions, I've seen them stop and actually mingle with fans when security was like, we need to leave, we need to leave. Signing autographs, taking pictures, really amazingly friendly and really genuine. I think, you know, just the performing, getting to go out and see different fans, getting to go and see different places around the world. And, you know, the buzz you get on stage doesn't really compare to anything yeah. else. So. And spending time with everybody on the tour bus as well, you know, it's like a different environment yes, yeah. on the tour bus. Yes. So far, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're really enjoying it. We're coming to the end, which we're a bit sad about. But, you know, we've, we've got a bit more time in the States, which we're really excited about. The music um, is uh, basically uh, teen pop. You know, it, it's shiny, happy, upbeat, positive music. You know, sort of like Justin Timber, uh, yeah, Justin Timberlake solo stuff, but uh, Justin Bieber's was as well during his early career. And it's, it's really, really fan friendly. It's really people friendly. I mean, even though it's aimed at a, a certain demographic, you don't have to be a teenager to like it or to even love it. One Direction Band is the biggest band on the planet at the moment. And I think they'll reign there for at least three or four years. Today, I think in terms of marketing, they really want to reach a particular target demo. There seems to be more interest, more demand, more excitement. You know, when they just hone in on a particular target demo and they just saturate it. And so everything, it just, it only appeals, you know, it really only appeals to that group. But by the same token, it's able to generate so much excitement that these things are in demand for that demo and they just want everything that they can get their hands on. So I think it's a, you know, it's definitely different than how it used to be, but I think it works out quite well today. With One Direction still the world leaders of fan adoration, there are other groups new and old vying for the mantle. The newly created boy group The Wanted is an American band designed specifically to compete with One Direction. One Direction has also been compared to British punk band McFly, who've been together since 2003. Harry just cycles all the time. Yeah, I remember going, I remember asking Dougie, I was Dougie, where's Harry? He goes, oh, he's just cycling somewhere. <laughs> he, 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 he cycles to work all the time. So. That's wicked, that's sick. Uh, yeah, that's really, really good. Cool. And he's um, ripped, didn't he? Yeah, because he did the dance, he did Strictly, didn't he? So, um, King of the Dance. Yeah. And we actually, when we were in America last, we went and saw oh, yeah. one of their shows that they were playing out there. Did you? Yeah. Um, well, One Direction has changed the way that pop music looks at the moment because they have just swept fans off their feet. I mean, everywhere you go, you will see one of those five guys on a poster somewhere. It's impossible to miss One Direction. I think for right now, the chemistry is so is so good. And so it's just, it's just hard to kind of pre predict you know what the what the future is going to be, but I think um, I definitely think they have a lot of a lot of talent. One Direction's phenomenal success seems to be dismissed as a passing fad of young girls going through a phase. The group has sold millions, filled arenas across the globe, and is individually wealthy at young ages. But how long can it last? The band might present themselves as typical goofy, uncensored boys, uh, and that works right now. Their sound works. And who knows, uh, over the years it might evolve. Right now it's bubblegum pop, and it might change over the years, so they might have a long and illustrious career. I've got a bucket list of things that we want to do, and we're kind of arranging them, little things, 
to tip off next year, I suppose. Like skydiving more. It's an obvious that everyone always skydiving. Yeah. Obviously skydiving. Surfing was one of them, and we've done that now. Yeah. I'm but it's all about surfing a, sp a specific place, like Hawaii. Yeah, yeah Hawaii is one of the ones I yeah. want to do, yeah. That'd be great.